Hi guys, and welcome back to Future Sight. I'm Rata Joey. And I'm Maxon. Before we get into the next episode, Maxon has something he'd like to say. Called it! <laughs> yeah guys, we're going to be talking about the um, new rotation that's just been announced yesterday for the um, Pokemon TCG. As a few of you may already realise, we've actually it's been announced that we officially are moving into a black white onwards rotation for um, September the 1st onwards. We're going to quickly use this episode to go over what we lose from the rotation and what we could use to actually replace those cards. Also what we, what we might feel would affect the format, of, no, how it will affect the format overall. So. With that said, let's move straight into it, and we'll look at probably what's going to be the most glaring issue with the new format, and that's the lack of any basic search. Going into Black and White onwards, we will lose Collector and Dual Ball, two of the most prominent basic search cards from the current format. With that though, we do still have some basic search in format. Just, no, uh, it's only the uh, Call for Family style attacks there. Yeah, also, uh, Max, you're a couple of miles away there. How about now? Much better. Yeah, uh, yeah as Max said, we have the Culfa family style attacks. We've got. Let's see. Uh, how many do we have that search for two now? There's only two so far, isn't there? Uh, well, we only have one. Do we have the Emolga? Uh, Emolga's getting released in the next set, and there's then the. Uh, the moment. Yeah, yeah so. Oh, have you, how have you pronounced that one? Uh, so we'll have two. So we'll, yeah, we will have two. Both of them can, for a colourless, search out two basic Pokemon for your bench. There are a couple that search for one basic Pokemon. I've no, I've always noticed though, like when I first started playing the game, whenever you had a Culper family for just one Pokemon, you could get yourself stuck in a vicious loop. Mm. If your opponent gets, you know, if you find yourself really behind on setup, if you only call for one basic, they could knock out your Culper family basic, leaving you with just the basic you've only just searched for, which means you get stuck in a loop where you basically call for family for a guy who can call for family, then have to use that again to call for family again. You just get stuck in this loop until you eventually yeah. you know, lose three turns later. The, um, Elgium and Emolga both have the advantage of the fact that they can turn around and say, well, I grabbed two. So if you are behind on setup, you can still go for a second Call for Family you know, Emolga mm. if you wanted to. But you can also get a basic four setup. I think out of the two of them, the Emolga really stands out. The fact that its attack, I feel, is better and it has a free retreat cost. True. I mean, the attack is um, it's one electric for... 20, 20 isn't it? Yeah, which isn't too bad well, well, for, what it, for what it does. Well, with um, Electric being so strong in the format right now, at least it can serve a purpose in at least one deck right now. Mm. Plus, it depends how strong Prism en Energy is getting played right in the Bulkwing format. Or the, it could uh, be a slightly splashable. Or the not, it's not going like, to you know, be the key card for finishing a game off. No. But you know, at least it does have the option to say, well, I'm going to put 20 damage on something. Well, that and 20 that... damage can be the difference between a KO. Oh, yeah, well, it's a case of... I've noticed a little bit in this format recently. A case where, you know, it can just be 10 hit points makes a difference between a one-shot and a two-shot or, you know, claiming a prize and missing out completely. Looking at you, Mewtwo. Yeah, I've actually, you know, I've actually done that before with uh, against that Mewtwo. You know, I started off with my in an extra matchup, placed the 10 damage with Scratch, mm -hmm. and it meant that my, later on my Tornadus could two-shot the Mewtwo. Uh, I was slightly thinking because a Mewtwo with damage on it means that all the opponent well, between you, you only need four energy as opposed to five. Well, yeah, it saves you having to invest the third energy, which means that you don't get counter KO'd as easily. They mm. need the plus power, or they need to put an extra ten damage on you somehow. It's a it is a very strong case that you know it's not just here is guy lose. It is a case of well, you can conserve that energy attachment. You can put a little extra damage out there. It can set up a KO. It's not going to like win you the entire game, to be honest. But it can Help. grab your pri it'll grab your prizes that weren't there before. The other thing is we still have level ball in rotation. Oh yeah, well we still have the most of the ball engine. We lose dual ball, but we keep heavy, we keep ultra, and we keep level. Now ultra ball and yeah, well I'll focus on ultra ball for this. So like something like ultra ball where I'm paying a cost to search for my Pokemon. I really would prefer the idea of like searching for something bigger than just a, a basic. If I'm if I'm going for an X, I'm more than happy to go for. Oh, sorry. 
Um, <laughs> I, if I'm going for an X, I'm more happy to pay the cost for it because it's a key attacker. It's a big guy. I don't really want to be paying that two card cost though to you know grab something small like a Tynema because uh, a Tynema can be very easily knocked out. I don't want to spend two cards to get something that's going to be knocked out before I get any use out of it. It, it, it just it, it's burning resources and it just seems kind of it just feels kind of productive to me i suppose it would depend on the deck that it's in or the card in hand because bianca looks like to be a popular card in the upcoming format oh yeah it's um that is going to be a, a good replacement for draw support mm-hmm. i mean if we can like hop on to you know from basics onto draw support now. I mean, we will be losing, you know, cards like Sage's Training and Pont. Pont. Now, a lot of people have been turning around, you know, you know, anyone who's, like, kept up with the Japanese meta at all will realise that, you know, it seems that Pont has been directly replaced by N. Well, yeah. people used to be running, like, three or four Pont, and they're running three or four N in Japan. We also have, like, you know, very strong Juniper lines. People aren't afraid to drop resources now if it's to get a fresh hand. Also, as you mentioned, though, Bianca's become much bigger just for the whole fact that... Like, dep- once again, this does depend on the deck. A lot of decks in the upcoming format should be able to burn a lot of cards out of hand. Mm. So you can Bianca for, you know, a minimum three, four cards. I say with Autobot becoming more popular, it's more likely you'll be able to use your effect more. Oh, uh, true. So if you um, use Ultra Ball, drop two, play down that card straight away. I mean, that's uh, three cards out of hand overall. Mm-hmm. So that's a draw of three. Bianca out of hand, draw of four. This is assuming, you know, you start with six. Yeah. And, you know, any extra cards, you know, any energy attachments, it's going to be extra draw. Well, it all, as I said, though, it will depend slightly on the deck. Certain situ- you know, certain decks may actually thrive better with cards like Sharon. You know, say if you don't really burn your hand down that often you, you, instead of going for Bianca for say one or two cards you can Sharon for the guaranteed three mm. it's less potential to draw overall mostly because Bianca can draw you the full six cards potentially whereas Sharon is stable at three it's like one's going to be less situational than the other and as I've said it will depend on the deck and how it's constructed on how it can actually work overall another big thing is going to be actually like the actual major build of decks Will we actually see people starting to run like starting Pokemon now? You know, it's like uh, we've got oh. like we've already mentioned like you know the Amolga, the Kofa family. We've already also got stuff like Sableye. You know, like we've already got like Hammer Time builds that are running like you know two or three Sableye. You know, for its ability to get trains back and just you know constantly spam them. Will Sableye go up to being four in a deck as a decent starter for Darks? You know, just to guarantee it and to really make use of its ability to you know, grab trainers and spam one. Plus the fact that because it's got those 70 hit points instead of 60, it's not easily donked. I mean, with Tornado, you know, say you go up against Tornadus, you need Tornadus, you need the DCE, you need the Stadium, and you need the plus power. It's like, it, it's it's possible, but doing that consistently, you probably get that out like one game of four at best. Yeah, that's true. Depending on your numbers. I mean, you only run two plus power, that's even less. No, I suppose the only thing we really have to draw uh, any kind of conclusion from is probably looking at the Japanese meta. Um, then again, our metas tend to be different as the way we build decks, or with like number of Pokemon or tools or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, and also the actual balance for decks. Yeah, so, but at the moment, it's like, from the High Dragon deck I remember looking at, Oh, yeah, it the... doesn't seem to... I don't remember it running any starters. Remember the Sableye? But then the again... Sableye was a full four line, which is more of a disrupt the opponent kind of yes. starter. As opposed to a starter that you know sets you up. It's something to hinder your opponent. Hmm. I mean, on the flip side of that is the Garchomp Hotario, which is another deck that's getting a lot of attention right now. Or even on the side of the ocean. It's, you know, the one list I've actually seen did actually run in Olga. I think it only ran two. So it's basically, you know, it's a case of it can start with it. It's not that it particularly wants to always start with it. Mm. You know, it's just, it's an option. Yeah. Instead of, you know, a go-to. I think um, with the rotation as well, there's a lot of decks that uh, disappear. I mean, we say goodbye to, like, uh, Rashi Flosion. Uh, Kate, uh disappears forever. Uh, Tyram's gone. Cake in its current form is completely utterly gone. You could probably build something around like Kling Clang, Cobalion and Kyram now, mm. but it wouldn't be as fast. You wouldn't have the prize deficit at least, but it just wouldn't be as fast and really what Cake needs to actually, you know, thrive now is speed. The 
Well, the other uh, concern thing is, which we've spoken about before is we won't have a uh, special dark or special metal in format until the, the reveal until they're actually reprinted. One. Yeah. yeah, and that's if they decide to reprint them, which, uh, as you mentioned, is actually. Um, it is actually quite interesting to see, you know, the idea of going into a format where there's cards. I mean, for as long as I've played, I can't remember a time where we've not had special dark and special metal. Mm. I mean, I wasn't around in the Gen 2, you know, when Gen 2 first introduced the energy mm. types. I've only been here for a few years. But it's a case of, you know, even to, you know, to me, it seems like a very strange idea not having them. Mm. Especially, uh, you know, we've had, just had a specialist in dark set. You, you, We've even theorised that there might actually be a, a specialist metal set coming out soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing. <clears throat> you, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, don't hold me to anything, but I'm guessing it's probably going to be like a Genesect kind of set. Mm-hmm. With it being the like metal insect bug type, and it's like going to be the next big reveal. Yeah, it, it would make sense. I mean, I, I'm I will back you up with the whole fact that you know don't ho- hold you to that, and don't, you know don't hold I you know don't hold this show to that. We we will. But, but if we get it right, you know, give us give us fuck. <laughs> You know, I mean, we'll, we'll take a pat on the back if we do get it. Well, if Max has got it right. But um, I'm just saying, we're, we're not right here to place bets. No. <laughs> I mean, g- gambling's frowned upon in this game. Let's just say that. You know, it, it's part of the code of conduct. Um, but getting back to uh, bound things, um, and let's say a lot of decks disappear, and there's a couple of the... Most of the Tier 1 decks at the moment kind of stay where they are, to be honest. Well, um, CMT kind of vanishes because there's no C. Yeah, that's true. Me too, I think Mewtwo Tornadus could stand a chance. It's not a case of it'll completely fall to pieces. Well, when you're saying top tier, I kind of meant Dark Rai and uh, uh, Zekrom Eels. Oh, yeah, I think you mean, yeah. It's like um, Zekrom Eels is... Um, I think, personally, I believe Zekrom Eels is all going to come down to how the actual format treats it and how it, you know, if the lists can be built for it to keep it as consistent as it is now. Well, you have to remember that. Um, it's going to get more support in the way of Rayquaza X, which is coming out in the tin. So that means that, unlike the Japanese meta, where it's only in, you know, able to be in the singles and stuff, it's going to be a lot more accessible when it comes overseas. True, that might be actually more of an intro for, like, you know, Ray Rai eels. Mm. But with um, Zekrom eel, it's mostly the fact that because you really wanted to drop your, um, your, your electric energy into the discard pile for the electric to accelerate it, we really lose that uh, option now we do have um, we do have ultra ball but we're losing junk arm yeah that's a big I mean, problem junk I mean... arm be able to grab things back from a discard pile you know tr- you know be able to actually guarantee what trainer you grab back it just seems a lot more appealing to a lot of people than the idea of drop these two cards to actually grab a pokemon that might be in my prizes yeah i think that's why save Lie is such a strong card because it basically it, it's already replaced uh well it's re- going to replace junk arm for the dark builds anyway whether or not other builds we'll try and splash save Lie in there maybe if they're blend energy compatible true it's going to be quite a quite a struggle to actually make save Lie work for all decks yeah it's it to me it does look like it right now it is going to be dark right exclusive just due to its, you know, just due to its na- its nature of you know requiring a dark energy for that. Mm. Are there any other important? Well, we lose um, twins as well, which means well, we use uh, trainer lock. Uh, well, vile plume variants as a whole. Uh, true. Uh, well, we don't lose. Well, we do lose vile plume variants, but we don't really lose trainer lock. No, we keep Gothitelle, which is. Uh... It's it's an iffy uh, trainer lock, really. When, when you two is in format, it's not the go to train the lock it's not ideal i mean really like the biggest train lock deck we probably have now is the going to be like excel go vile plume or vanillux you know the only one that well yeah vanillux is how we you know, is, well, is what we have now but in the upcoming format you know something that could transfer over gothic uh, or still stays around and you know oddly enough you know you, you mentioned the tins we will have a dark cry tin yeah and the Mewtwo but, tin as well yeah so it's like, well, if, you, if you're afraid of Mewtwo, you can go with Counter Mewtwo. If you're going, you know, you've also got the Dark Rise, so you can free retreat Gothitelle. The major problem is, uh, like, the advantage that Gothagore, that um, Excelgore has now, is if you're using the Valplume build, 
when Exceldor jumps into the deck again. If you don't think you're going to be able to get a second Exceldor straight away, you can really choose what to send out to take a hit. Whereas with Gothigore, you send Exceldor back into the deck and you send a Gothitelle. You're guaranteeing them what they're going to hit, and it is the source of your train lock. Yeah, the problem is, I know you're talking about Gothigore. Uh, the problem is that we do lose Sunflora for the deck, which is a big problem. Oh, yeah, I mean, I think the only replacement we'll have for it is the new Venusaur. And <laughs> to be honest, yeah, it's not ideal. A stage two alongside another stage two for a stage one deck. Yeah. It's um, not exactly ideal. There is uh, there is one card I do like in the uh, next rotation. It's the it's I don't know why I just I looked at it because there was like there was cards similar to it. It was the um, I think it was a Frostlass or something like ages ago. The Frostlass GL or I uh, know I think it was the Frostlass from last year. It's the Roserade from the Dragon set, I believe. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah it's when you evolve that. into it, you, you can, can search your deck for a card. I yeah, really like card from your deck. Yeah, I really like that kind of a uh, uh, ability. Although if the Rose Raid as a card, I don't think it has any particularly redeeming qualities other than that ability. Uh, true. Actually, let me just get that back up. You say it was Dragon Blade and Dragon Blast. I'm, I'm, I think it was. Let's see. So it'll be the second set. Yeah, it'll be the second because the first set has the amazing jump off. <laughs> amazing jump off. But it, it, it's amazing hands. in a it's amazing in a certain format. Oh, it's in the half decks. Right, I thought it was. Yeah. Let's see. Let me just scroll up to it. Let's see, it's attack for Grass and Colorless, Titan, 30 plus, if you flip a coin it does 30 plus 20 more, and it can it can grant Paralysis. That's not too... It's, there's, there's better cards, but as I say, I just think it's... If, well, I just like those kind of abilities, because it's, you know, you're getting something. It, it could be worth at least, you know, experimenting with, even if it's not going to be anything big, you know, at least test out the theory, you know, test it mm -hmm. out just for sake of knowing whether you can use it or not there's um uh, all of things are really going up format. we also lose all the uh, legend cards which is why why i initially said it was probably going to be black and white onwards because a lot of people said it was going to be called legends onwards but again we would have kept um old format cards or an old format mechanic in rotation well yeah we would have kept in um uh, actually they call legends actually print out any um, primes or legends? I don't think it's pretty did. sure it was Cresselia Dark Brows and Call Legends. I, I'm just scrolling through it now. Uh, no, Call of Legends didn't have any of those. No. It was all the different legendaries because we got the um, legendaries and their shiny form. Uh, no. But the th fact that you know, just like skimming through it now, you know, I'm looking at a Magby, I'm looking at Tyro. Uh, let's see what else is there. I'm looking at Miss Magus, Amphros, Cleffa, Umbreon, Smeargle. All of these cards were reprinted from early sets. Oh, Jirachi, Nine Tails, Magmorta. You, you, can, you can stop now. So you're pretty much every card in the set, other than the cards like Pachirisu, were actually um, were reprinted from earlier sets. Mm. Uh, the problem with this is, uh, what's really the point of rotating out? Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, through to Triumphant. If we're still going to have cards from those sets in format, yeah, it would it would make part of the rotation pointless, and it's like. Only a couple of these cards really saw play. I mean, like we've got Cleffa, Tyrogue, and so if I just scroll down again, Professor Oak's New Theory and Dual Ball that really saw play. I mean, at least we'd have got to keep Special Dark and Special Metal Energy. We'd have kept Loss Remover. It was like Loss Remover tied in with the whole Lost World mechanic, which was plat uh, it was actually a platinum mechanic, and they tried it again in Heart God Soul Silver. Well, yes. the Lost Link. But the fact that, you know, just going through here, it's like, well, okay, we got Lost Remover, we get you know, we get to keep Lost Remover, Lost World. We don't have any other cards that were meant to work with them other than, Miss, uh, other than Mime Jr. <laughs> I mean, we've got some of the cards that feature it in the artwork, like, once again, the Pachirisu featured it in the artwork, but, mm. like, keeping it, we lose everything else around it, we lose the Gengar Prime. So we'd have Lost World with no card to use it with. <laughs> It's just like, oh, you have all these things from different players. Like, well, there's nothing to do that. It's like, you can't even use Lucario. We'd have a Relicamp. Well, you, you're going to play the stadium because you think your opponent might run Relicamp? You wouldn't, would you? No. But, um... I mean, I think the best thing from Call of Legends is, oddly enough, the energy. And oddly enough, that's staying in format. The energy isn't going anywhere. Well... Heck, it was, yeah, actually, a, it was actually a player reward as well. Mm. 
but um, as I say, uh, most of the stuff that's going at rotation is uh, actually it's probably like pretty uh, important uh, to collect. Uh, I can't think of the supporters and stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of important support cards, I think you mean. Yeah, like twins. Yeah, twins is gone, black belt gone. I mean, I actually did like those two cards just for the actual like gimmick they were going for. You know, it was something different. It's like, here's huge bonus for going behind. I did like that. It was interesting to see. It was amazing. It was like it was it was pretty damn. It was it was nice to see. It was different. But uh, we lose uh, rescue energy as well, which is kind of um, yeah. Losing rescue is a is a bit of a hit, but we do keep we do actually get the rescue ribbon yeah to replace it so basically it's just that it's been effectively it's been retrained well yeah except there's a card that gets rid of jaws uh well yeah but we have cards that get rid of special energies as well yeah that's true fair enough then I mean, also though the fact that you know we we will be losing rainbow energy which is you know it's kind of sad to see it leave the format after like you know two whole rotations in mm it's been reprinted like you know for two blocks you know together and it, it, it it's been a useful card on and off but at well, least it's, it's getting split into two different energy types now you know two blends the problem the, there's a pro- the problem or the difference even is it's cutting away certain archetypes were as rainbow could be splashing anything now it's really only dedicated types and whether or not those types of decks have any um Synergy. Synergy with each other. I suppose yeah. with the, like I was saying, like new prime. I know it's going out of rotation, but I'm just saying as an example, is suddenly if, if you without rainbow, it could only copy a handful of attacks. True, but was um in the event uh, you know, in the, the situation of something like Mew Prime, you still have the prism. Yeah. You true. could still run like both blends depending on what element you needed. I mean like Mew X will be able to run like twelve special energies, you know, like eight blends. Mm. And the four prism. Although, to be honest, I guess the blend energy was more in mind for the dragons. Yeah, it does. Uh, it, it lines up amazingly with most of the dragons. There have been some dragons shown that just it just does not work with at all. No. I mean, like Rayquaza itself. And Flygon, I believe. Yeah, f- uh, the uh, Flygon thing kind of annoyed me. It's like, oh, it's a normal dragon. It doesn't match blend in the slightest. But like, I do like the fact that you know you, it will mean that players will have to be smarter with their teching options though. They can't just go rainbow energy, pop this in, there we go, and sort of for any situation. Now it's a case of blend energy. What kind of tech with this? Well, it depends. I mean, um, it'll depend on what deck you're running. I mean, things like Siglyph, which is an amazing tech, just because of the X Heavy. I mean, things like Darkrai don't have a problem because they have to say blend energy is a dark, but it's like with Garchomp or something. I'll tell you, if you wanted to tech it, it would be going round the houses. Uh, true. Let's see. Garchomp Altaria does have like all four energies, well, all three energies it personally runs in one blend energy. But it's a case of like, as I mentioned with the, when we actually covered the Garchomp Altaria deck, it, you know, that deck can actually tech the normal Rayquaza, but it couldn't use its secondary attack, it could only use the first one. Yes, you, know, so you could do like one for 60 if you had an Altaria, right? Mm. It's like you couldn't go for the secondary attack unless you actually decided to change your energy line slightly and put some fire energy, uh, yeah, fire energy in not really too unusual i mean we've seen in the past where people tech i mean it's like mo- a lot of play- players in the, like trainer lock will play bar bloom but they'll never play a grass energy true but um it's very rare you'd see something like an attacker that you can't use all of its attacks i mean i think the like biggest exception to that rule has to be something like mewtwo yeah who's only splashed mostly due to the fact that he his biggest attack runs off double colors yeah but even that you and me have seen that you can use that you know his, the side drive attack mm-hmm. when we actually ran when I actually te- was testing Mewtwo Gardevoir, there were KOs I was scoring because of Side Drive, the option to have it. So it's like, you know, if, the, if you've got a second attack there, you really want the option to use it. I'm not saying you're going to lose if you don't use it, because sometimes, you know, you have, you know, using one attack because it is just that big. But nine times out of ten, you want to be able to use a card for everything it's worth. All right, you're still there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you went deadly silent on me for a minute there. Uh, it's deep in thought. You lie. Anyway, we're actually uh, racking up quite a bit of time on this, so I think it might be best for us to sign off right now. All right, then. Until next time, I've been Rata Joey. And I'm still Maxon. If you like what you've heard, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, 
stay in the top ascent. Bitch.